Welcome back to Remy. We are here with these students trying to attack me. Let's see if they can do it. Obviously, they can't because I'm badass. Is she planning to use only one gun? No, she's going to dual wield without me expecting it. <laughs> I look her straight in the eyes and realize she is a bit uncomfortable. She's not used to fighting against another person. I can see in her eyes the fear of hurting me. I stop thinking whether to warn her, but come to the decision that she will be better understand it by experience. In a fight, you can't hesitate. Victoria stands still waiting for my attack. I take a step forward and see her shoulders tense. Another step. And another step. And another step. I see confusion arise in her eyes. I grip the sword in my right hand firmly and move to start running towards her, like I'm running in for a close range attack. It's exactly what she expects. So I take one of my swords and throw it at her. Taken aback, she barely manages to evade it, but I've already broken into a run. By the time she realizes what I'm doing, she is only able to get off one shot, which goes wildly off target. I'm already beside her before she can fire again, pointing my sword at her. Well, game over. You, you lost. I hear Rosalind clapping her hands together as a sign of that our fight is over. Alright, girls, that wasn't bad, but I will say this again so everyone gets it. Fight Cheryl with all you've got. Now please take a seat, Victoria, while the gentlemen give it a try too. Victoria nods and does as she's told, all, all, all along deep in thought. Now, how about you go next, Sin? Rosaline turns around to, see, to, to face son, Sin. I keep one as the Shin, with a sweet smile, but it's only given a cold glare in return. No. Hmm? What? Is there a problem? Sin doesn't even bother to offer an explanation, walking away resting against a tree. The chilling glow glower doesn't fade from his features for even a second. But Rosaline isn't faced by his behavior and turns to the other two remaining by her side with a smile. I see a glance at Sin's sitting figure. Just now. He acted the same way he did back when he met Miss Tyra. Even though I feel a lingering anxiousness about him, I forcefully tear my thoughts away from Sin and focus back on the task ahead. Maybe he doesn't know how to control it, like he doesn't want to even try i look back as i hear near footsteps okay then it's my turn oh no huh? I, look, I look over the tall guy approaching me he's wearing steel gloves and boots and is carrying a metal weapon that is ta that is even taller than him his attire is unusual the heavy armor will probably slow him down i'm certain its function is not protection but to enhance his shin in some way Counter to Victoria takes the initiative and lunges force forcing me to defend. For a while I let him attack and attack me and focus on defense, expecting him to use his shin, but he didn't. Hello? He's attacking me constantly, but not senselessly. He's keeping his shin hidden for now. Why? He is an experienced fighter to boot. He has already seen me fight, so he's trying to take advantage of that. Okay then, I'll go along with it. I set him a few slash at him with my sword. He easily blocks it with his staff. And just like that, we keep pushing against each other. But Nova's physical strength is, without a doubt, more than mine. And while he can keep up, keep this up using only one arm, I need to use both swords. Finally, he raises his other arm and strikes on his metal weapon. Holy crap. The world's shaking. Finally, he raises his other arm and strikes on his metal weapon. It suddenly causes a tremendous vibration to shoot through my arms and throughout my entire body. I have to get away from him. I sidestep out of his way and use my sources to direct his vibrating weapons towards the ground. But as soon as I'm out of the way, my vibrations from earlier cause my knees to get, flopping me down on my back. Nova strikes again immediately. The vibration of the weapon stopped. I stop the attack with one of my legs, but I can feel right away that I won't be able to hold out long. Wow. A contender here. I remembering that I was still holding one of my swords, I take a deep breath and swish it and swish. Swish it aiming for his legs. Of course, I make sure to use only force to knock him over. For a single luminous stroke. My attack causes him to lose his footing, and the second that he's off balance, I kick up with one leg and roll on top of him, reversing our positions. Nova must have let go of his weapon when he fell, leaving him, leaving him unarmed. Nova looks up at me with arched brows like he doesn't even understand what happened. Nova! I hear people speaking all around the field, but when Rosaline claps, I take a step back to let him stand up. Ouch, that hurt. And here I thought I got you. <laughs> that was nice. You made sure I use a sickle. Alright, it's my turn. Bro, I'm tired. <laughs> I look at Laggy who has already come up to take Nova's place with a wide grin on his face. I wait until K K Kotoyo, who has run up to Nova's side, help him up and out of the field before I answer with a nod. I will give him my all, so get ready. He's really enthusiastic. <laughs> he flashes me a friendly but challenging smile. For some reason, it makes me feel relaxed. He raises a fist, even though he is several, still several meters away from me. He's going to use a shin. 
With a wave of like his fist, Golden Flame- I knew it, he was a flame guy that I said I really liked in the very beginning. Uh, flare up around him and surge towards me. Wait, what's going on? Am I sick? At the sight of the huge golden flames, I feel the blood freeze in my veins. My knees weaken, my shoulders and hands start to shiver. And I stand there as the flames approach me, encircling me slowly. I can almost feel my skin burning with pain under the glowing fire. All I can see are the dancing flames, and my vision slowly blurs into darkness, as I feel myself both burn from the scorching flames and freeze from the fear that takes over every, every bit of my body and soul. Is she remembering an old, like, flashback? Were, like, her people trying to burn her alive? Okay, that will be enough. I think that's what the nightmare was. Then when I hear Rosaline's words, the burning heat disappears and my vision starts to clear up. The flames have all vanished into thin air. I feel my body weaken at the realization before falling to my knees, my body still shaking. I look down trying to steady my breathing and regain my strength. I don't even hear the running footsteps. Hey, are you alright? My shoulders is grabbed and I flinch at the touch. Laggy appears on my face with a worried expression. However, the warmth of his hands reminds me of those flames. I feel the previous fearing take me over once again. With a sudden surge of energy, I shove his hand off me and rush out of the training field, getting as far away from him as possible. <sighs> I wander aimlessly around the academy grounds for hours, not having any desire or will to return to the dorm. As the time for lunch appears, I'm tempted to fetch some food, so I tread along the road towards the Crystal Rose Fields. However, I become slower and slower with each step. I look at the sky and a weary sigh excuse my lips. Hmm? I hear a noise again? I hear the rustling of leaves coming from the woods on my right. With slow steps, I enter the forest and look around for the origins of the sound, catching sight of a familiar face. This is the little boy! The boy Aito, who I heard talking on the phone the other day, is standing beside a tree, casting his gaze upwards. What is he doing? This place is far off from any academy building. Only Crystal Rose fields are closed. It's rare that normal students come by here. The thought of him being controlled runs through my mind. I approach him cautiously and call out his name. He turns towards me in a rather vague manner. From the way he looks and reacts, I can tell for certain that he wasn't being controlled. What are you doing here? Taking his time, he scratches the side of his face and looks away, not answering right away. Then he finally replies to me in a small voice. I followed someone here. He's acting rather suspiciously. Someone? Who? Suddenly, the leaves of the trees above us start rustling loudly. Before I can react, something lands on top of my head. Surprised, I blink a few times and realize that Aito is staring at me intensely. He raises his hand and points at the thing on top of my head. Her. A cat? You followed a cat? Won't you take her off my head? But it looks cute like this. <laughs> I keep staring at the boy, expecting him to understand that I'm not in the mood for having a cat nestle on my head. Finally, he set, steps to the side and stretches his hand out towards the little creature. I feel it get to its feet and leap onto Aito's outstretched arm with a tender motion moving up to his shoulder. The cat starts purring happily as it nuzzles him. I glance at Aito one last time, ready to turn around and walk away, but realize that he's still staring at me. Do you need something? <laughs> you. You're actually more like a dog. What do you mean? I feel like I can't follow this guy's train of thought. I look at the boy, expecting him to explain what he means, but he keeps gazing at me. Though, now, instead of his usual daisy dazedness, he, his look shows interest and fondness. I feel my previous anxiousness fade away slightly and ask him with honest interest. What do you mean? His eyes widen slightly at my question. He lets out a small gasp and looks down. The other students say that you are like the cat of the Crystal Rose class. Unpredictable and only doing what you're in the mood for. But to me, you seem more like... Having been talking in a whisper, Aito's voice slowly dies out as he explains looking away. Understanding what he means, I'm slightly intrigued as to why he has come to that conclusion. But I feel that I shouldn't push. Excuse me, I should go back. I follow his figure with my eyes until it disappears. Somehow I want to talk to him more. I do! He's very interesting! Feeling myself eased after talking to Aito, I come to the decision that it would do me good to keep walking for a while. With that thought in mind, I go around the rows of the academy, eventually ending up at the main building where I see another familiar figure. Hiryu. Well, hey, love. <laughs> Hearing his name called, Hiryu looks up from the reference book he's reading while having lunch. What the, why are you always looking at me so angrily? <laughs> I can see one of his eyebrows twitch upon seeing me, which means he is still ir irritated. Despite realizing that, I walk up to him and take a seat on the bench beside him. 
I feel his eyes following me, but as I look at him again, the coldness has faded from them. He doesn't say or ask anything, but instead hands me a sandwich before getting back to his book. I nibble on the sandwich, laying my back against his side while he reads. Oh, he's so cute, giving us food and stuff. This is what I like about Hiryu. We may annoy each other to no end, but he understands me the most. He knows how I feel even without any words. Soulmate. <laughs> After I finish eating, I just silently stay by his side and slowly doze off under the warm sunlight. I awake in my bed the next morning. Whoa, I slept for a long time. Did he carry me here? How did he get in? I didn't realize how tired I was. With a yawn, I get out of bed, thinking of having a square meal. I feel my stomach rumbling with hunger. I jog down into the empty diner. On the table, there is a huge plate of toast with jam and fruits. Ryo is amazing. We're always welcome. Warm, delicious meals when we need it, even if it's the dead of the night or five o'clock at dawn. I hungrily eat up, enjoying the silence of the early morning. Ah, you're early, Cheryl. Morning. I greet her nonchalantly, even though I see a bit of worry in her eyes. She seems eased by this and takes the seat opposite of me. You only eat sweet things? More or less. That doesn't sound like a healthy diet. Ryo really pays close attention to what we eat to make our diet balanced. Eh? Really? Oh, it seems we aren't the only early birds. I half expect Nova to walk in, but my expectations are cruelly betrayed. I knew it. I knew it was going to be a laggy. Good morning. Oh. Uh. Cheryl, I haven't seen you since yesterday. We were all worried. Laggy walks up to me with hastened steps. The memories from yesterday come flooding back, and my shoulders tense just from having him close by. Say, are you alright? Then Snake is close enough to touch me. I abruptly stand up, knocking over the chair and slapping his hand away from me. Laggy freezes on my reaction. Oh, everyone is already up. Nope, this is, this is an awkward situation here. Um, what's going on here? I would like to know that too. Lagi takes a step towards me and instinctively lash out at him, feeling a shiver run down my spine. Stay away. What? What the hell? I thought we were finally starting to get along. Now you don't even want to be in the same room as me? Uh, uh, <laughs> it's just your powers. It's not you, it's your powers. I know. I know it's not his fault, but I simply can't stand it. Even the memory of those burning flames makes me quiver with fear. Um, did something happen? There was a little accident yesterday in training. Cheryl almost got hurt by Laggy's attack. And after that, she left without a word, and this is the first time I've seen her since then. Now she's acting like... like this! I don't understand. Surugi so glances at them, confused, but he immediately grasps the situation when he peeks in my direction. Ugh, Laggy. What is your shin? Huh? Fire. Sigh. I thought so. God, this is trouble. Surugi rubs his temple, thinking about this disc discon disconcerting turns of events. What? Sai, Cheryl has pyrophobia. Well, this is this is this makes a great love story, right? And it's a pretty heavy case. So that's why. Does that mean it's hard for her to even be near Laggy? What? Oh, what? Why are you afraid of chicks? Surugi exits from Koroyo and behind the boys and nods from there. Lagi like turns on his heel, probably to speak to me, but I throw the back door of the diner open and am already out of the room before he can even mutter a word. Days later, I'm resting under a tree after an exhausting night when I'm called by one of our new members. Ah, oh, Cheryl, here you are! I open one of my ears to look at the girl standing above me and then close it again. Or oh, ears? I said ears, eyes, sorry. Um, do you have some time to talk? I would like some advice. I nod. She sits down beside me and takes a small notepad and pen. I like to write everything down so I don't forget anything. She pauses, looking more serious now. You see, my special ability is kind of passive, so I can't use it in fighting. That's why I'm a bit worried that I can't help out much. When I talked about this with Rosaline, she said I could compensate for, compensate it for, uh, compensate for it with good physical training. Um, that's true. Rosaline herself has a passive ability, yet she is the strongest among all of us. Yes, she mentioned that, but she's always so busy and you're the second most experienced in this field. My nose is itchy. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I was thinking I should probably try using a weapon, but to tell you the truth, I don't even know where to start. Hmm, it would be too early to use a weapon. And with everyone busy, we couldn't even help you in choosing one. If you want to train yourself physically, first you should improve your physical fitness in general. One of our new members could probably help with that. Alright. But I won't be able to help out in the foreseeable future like this. 
She really wants to do something. Well, it must be hard not being able to help out her friends. And what is your shin? Oh, let me show you! She smiles happily, bringing a finger to her temple. She keeps looking at me. Suddenly, a thought surfaces in my mind that answers my question. Mental abilities such as projection and telepathic commu communication. I see. That's actually not bad. Hmm. And what are your limits? Or, its limits. Can you have a conversation through telepathic communication? No, I can only send short messages and images. If I know the person, then I can do it in a 20 kilometer range. And even to several people at once. It's really not an ability that can be used in a direct fight, but when working in teams, it would come in handy. And actually, it could be of help even before she trains herself. Actually, learning to use your shin at a high level would probably count as great aid too. Huh? Right now, we communicate through crystals made by Ryui, but they leave an extra burden on her to on top of holding up the barriers. And if you could ease that burden even a bit, that could actually mean saving lives. <laughs> it's cool power. Really? Perhaps she could combine her power with Ryui's magic, and then it could work. Uh, but I'm sure Rosaline has already realized that and is in the process of working it out. Hey, Nova. There you are, Koryo. Oh, are you guys together? Let me let me walk out real fast. The others say you skipped class. I got worried. And this is where we are going to save for today. Right here. This is a long demo, Jesus. When they said two hours, I think it's just because I'm like taking time to react as well, so it's gonna be a bit more than two hours. But anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Bamboo can she so, so she so, so can.